Hi everyone. I want to spend these next few minutes talking about transporting your electric wheelchair. Why I'm making this video is to encourage you to be able to bring your electric wheelchair to friends and family. So even though you may have a physical disability, you're still able to take part and live your life. This is really important to me. You know, when I agreed to use an electric wheelchair, it was so I wouldn't be stuck in my home. And I got my life back when I started using one. And I want nothing more than the same thing to happen for you. So the following are the ideas that I have that may bring you and your electric wheelchair to some type of, of event or getting out of your home. The first suggestion I want to make is using a taxi service that is wheelchair accessible. So normally this type of taxi service will be done using a van where a ramp will typically fall out of the side door. You'll drive your electric wheelchair up the ramp and then the driver will secure your wheelchair using tie downs so you won't slip as the vehicle goes around corners or if it was by chance in an accident. A wheelchair taxi service is excellent for unplanned emergencies. The biggest emergency I can think of is getting a flat tire for those of you who have a wheelchair that uses inner tubes for the two powered tires. It is a more expensive method of transportation, but for being rescued, it's well worth the money. And I've found the wheelchair accessible taxi drivers to be very caring and concerned people for your welfare. Now, the next method I've thought of is for cities large enough to have their own public transit. Many of the buses now have a ramp that falls out of the bus by the driver. This is especially helpful for wheelchairs, strollers, people using walkers, people transporting groceries even. It's not just a wheelchair that would use this ramp. When I've used public transit, the drivers have been more than gracious to accommodate me and I let them know when I get on where I'm going so they can help me when I'm arriving at the destination. So typically with a wheelchair accessible bus, the bus will come to a stop. Able-bodied people will load and unload from the bus and then you'll be presented with the ramp to get yourself on. When the bus reaches the destination, you'll typically be the last person to get off. I'll tell you a quick funny story that happened to me the last time I was on a public transit bus. There's seating designated for wheelchairs. So the seating that's designated for wheelchairs means the seats that are there just flop up. I didn't realize that on the backs of these seats 
was a strip you could push to signal you're going to stop. And I accidentally had my wheelchair positioned against this. Virtually each and every bump we went over, the wheelchair was ringing the bell. I didn't realize it was me. And in fact, the bus driver was getting mad at other people on the bus for pranking them. So I learned a lesson to check where the buzzer actually is. And then not to be parking tight against it or when the wheelchair would be able to signal it when going over a bump. The drivers that load and unload the wheelchairs on public transit are professional and it's not a concern. You should not feel ashamed to need to use this service if you're someone who would indeed benefit from it. Now when I've gone from the city I live in to other cities, I've used Canada's National Passenger Train Service. It's called Via Rail. There are equivalent train services throughout the world. So here in Canada, they bring a special ramp to the tracks. You drive your electric wheelchair onto it, and then the staff uh, uses a lever and just rotates the same idea as um, cranking a handle over and over and that raises the platform that the wheelchair is on up to train height. Once on the train there are tie downs to keep the wheelchair safe and secure while the train is en route. It's a very safe system. I've also had wonderful experiences with this. The area I live in and where I've had to go is sometimes beyond the transition station in Toronto, Ontario. There are special porters and attendants hired by the train company to, dis to, a, to a company the disabled passengers. It's a well thought out service and certainly I would recommend wholeheartedly that if you ever have the experience of riding the train with your wheelchair that you would do so. There's nothing to be ashamed of. The staff are only there to help you and they are caring individuals. I've had really good experiences riding the train with my electric wheelchair. Now, I've also seen customized vehicles. I'm specifically talking about pickup trucks. I've seen pickup trucks with a crane installed in the back that's able to lift up an electric wheelchair and hoist it into the back the crane control is for the driver to use and this vehicle was very fancy. It had a transfer bench so the driver would get into position and load his wheelchair into the back. The crane unfortunately cost around 20 grand and then there was the cost of the vehicle in addition to this. But in terms of quality of life and if you're able to learn how to control a vehicle using the hand controls, that is a, a lever for gas and a different lever for brake, you know, this is a skill to be had and to promote independence. There obviously is a need for the finances to pay for this up front. It is a lot of money out of pocket, but I agreed to use an electric wheelchair to get my life back and I think we can both agree that it's worth it if you have the money to promote your independence. Now there's also the option of buying a van where the ramp 
falls out of the side of the van. And if you don't have a lot of money, but some money that you could invest in this, then what you could do is approach a local taxi company or a community transportation service that uses these vehicles and offer to buy one when they're no longer in use. So these companies typically change over their fleet of vehicles every three to five years. The reason is because of the sheer number of kilometers and at that point it's not worth their while maintaining it. But this would make a great vehicle for you to get around in the town where you live with your electric wheelchair. I mean, even some of these vans have it so the driver's seat can come out and you can sit right in the driver's seat with your electric wheelchair and either use the gas and brake or have the modification made and go through the training so you're licensed to drive a vehicle that uses the gas and brake by hand. And what you're looking at is a few thousand dollars to buy one of these vehicles second hand. It's certainly not going to be made for a cross country journey, but to get around the town, you know, to go to your physiotherapy, grocery shopping, your place of employment, and maybe friends or social engagements, it would be well worth the investment. Now, for me, I've had friends want to take me to their cottage and be able to help me get away and enjoy life for a few days. So another option of bringing your electric wheelchair with you is using a trailer hitch and a utility type trailer to haul your electric wheelchair. Now this method assumes that you have some mobility, even if it is using crutches to get yourself in the car. What you would do is add some type of hooks onto the trailer so that you would use the tie down points on your wheelchair to secure it to the trailer. Then you would get off the trailer walking off of it and going into the car. If your mobility is very, very limited and someone is taking you, it's possible that you could teach them how to drive your wheelchair and that they could load them and you would just need to show them where the tie down points are. It's only safe to secure the wheelchair using the tie down points. Otherwise, you risk bending the frame of the electric wheelchair. It's really, really important that you remember this and that you tell this to someone else if they are going to be driving your electric wheelchair to secure it onto a trailer and you're not able to physically see it. Additionally, it would be worth having some type of cover for the wheelchair, such as a tarp or even a barbecue cover there are parts on your wheelchair that are susceptible to rain. You need to protect the wheelchair from weather that will hurt it if it's being transported on a trailer. Also, the bumps on the road resonate through a trailer and cause it to bump. So you need to make sure the tie down points are tight that the rope or whatever strapping that you're using is taut so that it will indeed keep your wheelchair safe and secure. You don't want the wheelchair to bounce off of the back of the trailer or in any way be hurt while you're transporting it. Now finally, I want to talk to you about some of the advances that are being made with electric wheelchairs. I've now seen electric wheelchairs 
that can fold up and go in the trunk of a vehicle the same as a manual wheelchair. You know, there are wheelchairs now where the batteries don't weigh 150 pounds and it's possible for a person to load them into the trunk themselves. And it's really worthwhile looking into. You know, it's so important that you keep your mind healthy and active even when you have a physical disability. It's worth the money to invest in whatever it takes to get you to be taking part in community events. And in fact, I could see it that a community fundraiser could occur to pay for some type of modification so your wheelchair could come with you and be able to attend social events. It's really important and in the age that we live in it's acceptable and it's not anything to be looked down on when one needs an electric wheelchair for their mobility. In addition to wheelchairs that fold up I've also seen electric wheelchairs that are able to drive uh, through the boot or trunk of the wheelchair and right into the driver's seat and the electric wheelchair is the chair that the driver uses. So instead of the trunk of these vehicles opening at waist height, it actually opens from the ground up. A little ramp falls down to make the transition between the parking lot and the trunk and you just drive on right in. So there's lots of advancements happening in mobility devices. You know, I've also got my eye on these new hoverboards. You know, those hoverboards are able to transport a person. There's no reason why another pair of seats and a change in controlling mechanism could happen so a joystick runs it. I can see the cost of electric wheelchairs coming down during these next few years. I've also seen a kit for just shy of $2,000 that's able to um, modify a manual wheelchair and allow it to become an electric wheelchair. Why I'm bringing all this up is that your life is completely worth it what you're able to contribute to the community just by being there brings hope and courage to people who maybe have emotional problems or mental health issues it's also a, it also gives hope for people who are battling cancer you know someone's troubles may not necessarily be near as visible as someone who relies on an electric wheelchair. But by being there and people seeing you work at your life, it brings people hope who may not have the courage to speak up and say that they're struggling. So I want to leave that with you, that your presence in the community is very valuable and that's one thing that you can contribute that most people can't just by virtue of requiring an electric wheelchair. So these are my thoughts about ways of transporting your electric wheelchair. And I would appreciate a conversation taking place in the comments of this video. This is something that needs to be talked about you know, people who have a physical disability shouldn't be bound to their home, but be given the option of engaging in whatever social activities they want to partake in. I want to thank you for this time that you've spent with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.